Joint lecture that we are hosting as part of uh, PPT conference. I'm very happy to have Nandita over here. Uh, just a quick introduction to the PPT conference. Uh, PPT is a new brand that we launched as part of the conference series that has been. Uh, so the idea is to bring together developers uh, uh, and ecosystem players for patents to actually come together and uh, get an understanding of how the uh, how the entire system works. So the first two lectures that we held one with uh, Ankit Meshwari and Pali Javed and then uh, the other one with uh, Nemo. I think for all of us to know that the payment system, uh, the way it functions in India is a, is a pretty, uh, is, is a monolith and, uh, uh, and I don't think any of us really understands that you know, what comes where and uh, how things really start and what things really end and you know, what each player is responsible for. And I think also it's a pretty dynamic system in that sense because the regulation and policy is really changing all the time. Uh, so part of the conference uh, is, uh, is really to kind of like spread the awareness and how the system really works, what are the new changes. How regulatory frameworks even affect the way in which we develop software for payments, and uh, also for example, what are uh, the emerging uh, areas uh, which we are exciting opportunities uh, 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 in terms of market interaction for payments. So, as part of the conference series, we are hosting a bunch of payment talks, also for us to get a sense of how to relate the content to the conference. The conference itself is on 7th and 8th of December, and we've just been hosting a bunch of community events for the conference. So, I'm really glad to have Manjula over here. Uh, I suppose uh, it's only fair to say that uh, we have quite authority here on the authentication systems and uh, I think uh, what uh, I'm looking forward to is uh, probably a very interesting exercise on not just talking about authentication payments but also looking at issues of identity and fraud which are quite critical uh, to the whole business. So I'm not going to take up too much time and uh, really I can thank Mandela for coming here and joining us. Thanks for joining us. How many of you are some payments? Some? What of you are uh, problem or uh, the why you want to focus on authentication or general problems for people? There is no question. One of my walls had a central code. So, this is what I was planning on covering. Right? Um, basically, what's happening is uh, as I sat down and looked at the whole spectrum of payment in the game, we now authentication may be required. And then uh, it's really, really a huge space and uh, uh, difficult to cover the hours now. So what I'm going to focus on uh, is payments in the situation of card not present. You guys understand what card not present and card present scenarios are? No. You want to define that? I, I can't define it, I understand what it is. Okay, uh, yes, yes. So anyone else? So basically, the card present is where the person and the card are physically present. It's the ATM situation, or uh, you're in a store, and you're using those POS terminals, and your card is inserted and uh, you know, scanned. Or else, uh, you know, something like a square, where some device comes to you. That's card present. The identification here is complete. Different and this card reverse it. The card itself has a specific protocol which it can communicate with the rest of the human switch in a separate way. Uh, but the payments currently, uh, what we are looking at, uh, if you look at it, look at how they are doing, they, uh, the most scenarios are card not present. Right? When you are paying online, you don't need to have card present. You just have to remember. Uh, CVV comes, right? And the uh, authentication and fraud for possibility is a really huge in card not present. And then start focusing this talk on card not present uh, scenarios. Uh, is that fair? Um, so the payments, anything else? Uh, you're thinking of any other situation between these two. Uh, and this basically covers online payments and wallets uh, and fully some of the phone uh, and all these kind of things. Right? And then I go a little bit into what is called PD CPO, which is the other thing uh, for a lot of the uh, payment networks. And I think all of the payment networks, Visa, Master, uh, Chalai, and DC, you know, Alex. Uh, okay, so let me explain this. So why is authentication needed? Right? A basic question. Um, anybody wants to take that question? Is that identity? Is it a big issue? Do you need to identify? Authentication. Typing the identity of the person. 
No, it should we just communicate to you, you can put it in your pocket. No, this is easy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that in the middle is something that happens either with your web server. So there could be a uh, malware plugged into your browser, just start dialing the browser. The quietly listens to everything that you are doing, typing, and putting out. Right? Once you type them, then it cuts off the session and poses as you. That's uh, a line that we can to that with DNS, and what, what they call DNS poisoning. It basically reroutes your request from the destination server to some other server. So you're forced to enter your other information in some non way. So that's what that is. Any experiences, any useful? So there are there's a couple of provision called bad pick. Right? So that was breaking through the server stuff. <coughs> yeah, so uh, one big thing, someone is logging to your web browser. Right? That's called landing the browser. So basically it just listens to everything you're doing until the right time, right? The other is a more sophisticated attack where you poison the DNS server to reroute the uh, uh, website page of saying icacaattack.com and the poison it and a certain way and it's a targeted attack. So it is rerouting the uh, malicious website. This would be having a firewall. Firewall and a end user point. Yeah, so yeah, how is it a firewall? Stop DNS. The DNS may be resolved in the organization, but it might be resolving against yeah, it so might be some other ISP, right? I mean, it might be some other ISP outside. outside. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. 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 a targeted attack, right? I mean, some of these uh, uh, plans. 
Yeah, so I think this is where the issue Then how will be able to survive? But technically this visa works, but legally it shouldn't be allowed. I mean, it should be illegal is what I am saying. Yeah, so it is illegal, but you know, the way the guidelines, are they guidelines, if you look at this matter, the way they are written is very iffy. They don't say, you know, it is mandatory. It is suggested. It is suggested. It's written as a guideline. And uh, there are minimum set of requirements for any of these security audits. So if you pass that, you are a valid act. Uh, but that is that is where the distinction between a PCI certified app versus any other app. Right? You know, nobody is saying all apps are safe. Uh, and probably as a consumer, you should demand your bag to be more PCI certified. And if there's something that you're noticing like this, you should ideally flag it. But you know, we don't do that. We are not consumer rights country. So that is where the, uh, some of these issues come from. And also, it, it's always about user convenience versus security. security. I'll talk about trade off a bit later. And businesses tend to move those trade off because you know, unless there is a severe loss, what happens to them, they are not too much worried about the loss that you do it. Uh, and there are some legalities around that too. And there are precedences in the Indian country about how this can be addressed. Any other questions here? So attacks are right. The reason I put all these attacks is, you know, depending on which one you want to stop, you need to have different levels of attack. Right? If it is just User mediation showed us something with the right passwords and all that. You know, it's two kind of mitigation which is one few more SMS. Thank you. But if you have to stop wishing um, user awareness is not cheaper. That's not something. Even very, very, very difficult for people are calling you. These people talking and said, you know, you just got an SMS. And you know, it right? And you know, every day you have a password. Even what you have called for recently, there is, uh, uh, it's not, it's not mandated. Uh, yeah, that's and, right. It's, uh, it's written as a guideline, right? And, they uh, say RBI guidelines say you are encouraged to implement your method. It doesn't say it is mandatory to implement. And that's how I feel they have been recurring billing months. There was long time, there was no recurring. But now, what is it? It's still in the middle. No, it is. It is so, because the companies are not going through that issue, right? Uh, so, if the merchant is, uh, so the thing is, uh, the reason maybe just pay has that is that if something bad happens, just just pay won't take the liability for that. Mm -hmm. The liability is part of So, otherwise, there can be chargebacks. Yeah, right. But now, what has happened is the merchant who is going to get the payment says, you know, if there is a chargeback, go for it. I will take the liability for that. So, uh, it's more so of a business model issue rather exactly. than a technology, technology issue. issue. But uh, I think legally it's a grey area. It's a grey area. Legally it's a grey area, but uh, many people have enabled recurring billing using that. So I know for a fact, Media now had an article recently about that. Uh, so with business standard, which is. Yeah, like it is still a topic very hotly debated. Yeah. And uh, it's not a it's not final solution. It's not mainstream. So I have a question about Mr. Kapoor. So basically, when you buy stuff from uh, foreign websites, say AliExpress. Uh, there is no two-factor uh, two authentication there, right? Now, what stops an Indian business from, you know, from, from probably having their offices in a foreign country while selling goods in India? They wouldn't need so that just one factor of the RBI rule says if your management sits in India, then you're Indian business. Okay, but the, I, I heard like Flipkart or somebody has their offices in Singapore or something. Yeah, yeah. so all of them do, but they have to be considered Indian because management is based on here. Yes. So okay. RBI rules no, no. are that so you can be a business can be registered anywhere, but if you are Indian operating to an Indian customer, then you have to use an Indian gateway in their rules. So it doesn't matter where the company is registered. How will they enforce it? It's just about who complains. So you talk complaint and complain. This is what happened to Uber, right? But okay. Uber actually had billing outside India. Alright. They were billing from the Netherlands. And Ola complained and RBI shut down. Okay. So if you are monopoly, you can Yeah. It's fine. Or if you're too small for any of your competitors to care. Okay. It's not a bit of a gray area, right? But I had a case where this guy bought something from an Apple iTunes website of UK. UK apparently 
you have seen it is not in some areas because some of the banks they have taken the burden of uh, you know we actually we must be customers are themselves charged yeah all these charged banks are also compensating the end user not happens uh, so and then he fraudulently got a charge about a lakh on his credit card is trying to sue them because they are very fast. So, <coughs> not, it's like not working. So, I guess it's a, again, a trade off issue between business uh, convenience and business. Right. So these are the various things that I can tell you. Right? I, I put all these things here because uh, the level of Attacks that you want to stop is directly proportional to the level of So, there are more uh, options and uh, all the user friendly is it? Yeah, no, the, the type of two factor you use can block certain attacks. Um, so, one is typical uh, OTP or SMS. But there are things like Google Attack, which is a time based which is constantly changing the right? And then there are PKI, PKI scans, which are compared to a lot of other things are still high end in terms of the attacks that you They can block the whole of the MIT apps, do not be in my So I I want I will really go through some of these things, various mechanisms. And then we can discuss which one is suitable for which kind of situation. Basically, any two factory should be a combination of this uh, ownership is something that you have. The phone, it could be a token, it could be even uh, you know, your laptop. Nowadays, the linking into the network. Right? Uh, knowledge is something that you remember. It's a side password during registration. Or uh, you know, pet names, mother's maiden names, but no details. And then the inference. Inference is where a lot of current technology development is happening. Where they look at history of you for the past seven, eight months and say, you know, this person behaves in a certain way. Then suddenly he's buying something else. And they increase the risk score to say 90 and say, you know, I have no credit transaction or ask for additional identification. Uh, inference also would be, you know, your biometric. Right? If you are using, you know, have this eyes, this person more likely that that's you. So these are the three different problems. And you know, I put uh, actual mechanisms that we use. Right? Uh, in the tokens and smart cards, uh, where your phone ownership is established, the OTPs, and there's also audio frequency models where uh, something is not even taken in terms of a website and your phone app can hear it and then automatically transfer the identification back. Same with messages, right? You select a message, the message of secrets upon your phone and it's on the website. They have to match those pages. Uh, so things like that, where the ownership of a laptop and the phone is established through so these mechanisms. The picture is part of the agenda, a little bit of time we do it because that's one of the uh, key uh, high tech solutions for a lot of the problems. But also, there are issues in terms of user coming there because we need to distribute this kind of detail beforehand for the PKIs to work. And there are some uh, business solutions that have come around, you know, Ubico and all this. Passwords, great cards, personal info. Uh, so that's probably everyone is using those. Right? That's usually the first factor. And people are using uh, ownership as the same. Biometry is less. Can you give an example of a website which uses audio frequency for identification? I'll let it just try that. Um, there's a company called Authy. Do you Yeah. So they are the ones. Prevalent in the US. Okay. I don't think in 
Indian guys have it. But go to RPG, you can download the app. Man the frequency. Same as QR codes. Momo or something? Momo is. Momo is. Talking about Ultra Gash. They use audio frequency. For, yeah. Yeah, it's Ultra Gash. But where does the audio frequency come from? So the cash is just. How is for the transaction? Contact is transaction. They use audio. Similar right? Yeah, similar right, yeah, but slightly different uh application. Yeah. Yeah, you can try it out. Huh. I I don't know. But Audi is the guy who provides that mechanism of the So the active authentication is basically a rule based thing, right? So what happens? You have it's ICS actually uses that. So you log in, they send you OTP, and sometimes they ask you to download that smart card. I don't know. Uh, what they have done is they have classified their users into various categories. For high net worth individuals, they have enforced smart cards. But for a lot of other normal things, people SMS or not. So what happens? Let's say you travel to Kamatra, Sri Lanka. Which is considered a high risk country. Thailand also, right? And uh, China, right? When you do a transaction there, there is an engine sitting in the along with the banking system, which is trying to analyze the transaction. And uh, based on a lot of parameters, it scores the transaction from one to one. And if it if it goes above 60, there is a add an additional authentication for this. So it's like a combination of uh, maybe uh, it's a combination of this <coughs> engine plus maybe add extra layer of protection. Yeah, yeah. It's a combination of this engine, this rules. Sometimes it's analytics, right? Uh, you know, it, it looks at transaction in the last two years something. And so if there is a transaction which doesn't fall into any of those things, it automatically will drop. No, I guess it's uh, yeah. I thought that it was a different technique, but it seems like it's a combination of uh, Yeah, it's a combination, combination. of uh, this engine and the uh, in fact, you know, the Arca gives you Arca is a company which invented to be a Yeah, and that's actually the, one of the problems, right? Where does two factor authentication stop and leave the other way? You have a legitimate reason. And that is why adaptive authentication, right? You should be able to intelligently predict the user. If you are a business traveler and you know, you a lot of time, you should not have to do every time you use browser. You should be able to predict that this person is this. Maybe add an additional authentication. So the problem is, wouldn't, wouldn't the problem be harder than this? Because uh, most of the time it is like point of sale systems that you swipe your card and we know that, uh, I, I found that, uh, uh, said the card uh, was declined and I didn't know what the reason was until I was called in a bit of this system. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, I had another card. But, but even if you have pause, so this is a parallel thing, right? This is the card not the same, as I said in the this whole network is card not In M4, um, it actually goes through various a different network, which is ISO 8580, which is a payment switch, right? Most of the banks have it, they are connected to the ATM networks. That's actually a very dedicated network, it's not even an NHP. So, should, it should be easier for them to maintain because ultimately everything comes here. And you notice analysis even sits here, right? The adaptive authentication layer sits just above the get to four bank, four or even payment banking comes here. Right? ATM payment processor is here. Finally, it goes back to the four banking, which is the massive net jar. 
by diversity and come up with a post of the PDC. And it forces you to uh, enroll. Uh, forces you to enter the another password in other domain. One of the problems with PD security is you go to City Bank and you are entering. It goes to another domain where PD security is hosted. It is not hosted in the and it also pops up. Both of these mechanisms are uh, a big MITM enablement. Actually, enablement one of the biggest uh, criticism of PV is it helps phishing and malware. So, they are coming up with this concept which is not fully done yet. There are some uh, trials that are happening. When they say for every transaction, there is a uh, random code assigned which goes back to the transaction so that the transaction information with respect to account information everything doesn't get traveled across the network. Um, so this is another layer of abstraction. Is it hash? Is it, um, hash code it is one of hash code is one of the mechanisms. But it could be any random substitution for your uh, for your transaction. Right? It's an account number. If you mark the whole transaction with some code and that code translates to the transaction in the packet. So, to understand, there are maybe two or three ways of doing this. One is definitely uh, hash the whole thing with some kind of a salt, which is a shared secret. Yeah, right. The problem is in the shared secret is, I mean, it's kind of like, not exactly what's kind of security we're obscuring, because if the mechanism yeah, of calculating the, yeah. uh, mechanism of calculating the salt itself, yeah. uh, and if that, and the way the like, code is getting leaked, uh, so it's not foolproof, right? None of the two two kind of applications are true, including PK, right? Including PK because all you need is that, that smart card, which is again a, a soft copy that is sitting in the machine. So that is where it's Ubico, I mean, it's Pido Alliance, right? Didn't actually know Pido Alliance? Not correct. <laughs> Who else was Pido Alliance? Peter Lens is a group of companies, including Google, who have come together and they formed this consortium uh, uh, to solve the identity uh, aspect, identity and knowledge issue. Right? Because none of them are good. Group. What they are actually promoting is a hardware key that basically sits in your face. Right? And it's a single key for any sort of services. One can hold uh, up to 50 60. You just have to register, download the specific key using your credit. So they are promoting it quite a bit. It's not fully out there. I mean, there are companies who are building the beautiful vehicles that are the most well known ones. There are more at least uh, 30 40 companies in the valley who are uh, in the manufacture of the hardware key. To become the key for every transaction. It's like they're traveling at 25 years. Yeah, now. it's actually it's going back. Right. Yeah, it is. Uh, more and more, they're realizing that any amount of software solution may not work because software can be seen. So, Google is a uh, more of a payment network. So, but LPCI is not It's a payment for The idea of LPCI was, uh, you know, all these transactions, the go to Visa or something else, you're basically using all this data to some third And you're not getting any information. And you don't have an indigenous payment. Why do I, if I transfer money from here to, you know, Jesus, why should it go back to? From American server uh, and you're also losing all this valuable data for people are doing third party. It's a concept of indigenous switch, but also in that thing, there are a lot of government schools which can be data work. Let me say it is owned by all the banks in India. And also to make the transactions uh, more efficient. Yeah. The money in the overheads are lower. Overheads are lower. So, Rupee basically is like a, a visa. Right? Rupee is a brand like visa. 
And uh, actually, <coughs> this year uses the same thing because I saw this hint to software to drive off. This this place I've been in, I, I was responsible for something like that. In this case. I know quite well. They already have PB, which is very good. Pretty simple. Actually, 98% of the world is in PB. Payment networks use PB sectors. Find one PB. There are some variations of it, but, uh, but that could be of the client side. If you, if you look at all these things, right? Authentication is not a network issue at all. Because you cannot do too much in the network. It's all pretty different. The switches are there and they're owned by different third parties. So the onus of making authentication falls on the end for software makers, whether it's websites or apps. And how much you want to put effort into those areas. Make your authentication sector is you know in a good business model issue, not just technology issues. And then you know authentication actually relies on your identity parameter, right? If you say Aadhaar is my identity, and when you go and present Aadhaar as an ID, what it does is it basically scans your IDs. You know, that goes back to the back end other database. Says whatever is presenting is true, right? If that whole mechanism of the database is corrupted, authentication is not only there. So the enrollment and ID creation part is much more complex issue than authentication. Authentication is poor techniques saying, you know, um, if this person is playing this game, I'll go on your door and then catch But if the ID itself is corrupt, Authentication mechanism is not. Documentation is So, how much time do we have? About 20 minutes, but. Sure. So, this is what uh, I didn't want to go into the gory details, uh, but if anybody wants to look at how to do and uh, the reason it is available as plugin, right? There are merchants of plugin. There's access control server which tries to and in fact uh, as I was mentioning earlier, they actually uh, forced it to buy it from a third party server and then redirect you to the previous thing before the transaction is done. So then you go outside your domain. So one of the safety mechanisms is if you look at ICS event, so we get this ICS event. When it gets redirected, the ability of the hackers to interview their own malicious code through the root increases. Because it's getting it's out of your control. It's out of your control. It's going out of ICIC or ICIC. The transition is out of your control. So yeah. if somebody has a DNS before something like something, then the user has no way of knowing that we are going to. Yeah. The DNS is not Example. Yeah, even like like BGP is like even like at country level you are seeing those attacks. Exactly. Because In the manual browser, they can pop up and take the passwords. But maybe even like have a transparent overlay kind of thing. Yeah. Which inside it is. There is manual browser like. Yeah. You know, there are a multitude of attacks, right? Now, ultimately, if the hacker is very determined. It's using the, the because it increases uh, attack surface, is that's why you're not very happy to Yeah, it. exactly. It increases the attack surface. Uh, the pop ups are always, you know, fertile fields for popping up problems. Right? And then you can make the uh, passwords into your. But then, can this same argument apply to a redirection to a bank? Let's say you're a customer website, and then suddenly to complete the transaction, you're taken to a bank. Yeah, the bank is still a better brand. 
have nice profile, we get small business. So you thought that you are in your own business, you can detect it. You can detect it if you are Typically, I will mean, do that. I mean, yeah, exactly. If you want. So, I mean, it's. If you are a smart people, you can see in theory, you can. You can see the share. Right, so basically, what happens, I mean, the one Brotherhood statement with all the poor thing, if a person is very difficult and resources are not an issue, any two of your system can be broken. Uh, including physically paying me go away. Yeah. If somebody holds a gun to your head and yeah. they can't yeah, exactly. the security is going to Yeah, go and you know, <laughs> biometric, they can like pluck your eyes and then. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you see it in many books, right? So, uh, uh, you know, uh, about, uh, going to that extreme violence and all that. Uh, they have demonstrated that the uh, fingerprint images can be captured. Right? But, but now I think the liveliness checks and other things. Yeah, yeah, but then how many will actually implement in every phone, right? That's yeah. always a problem. If it's a 5,000 phone, they don't want to implement it again. Also, liveliness liveliness can also be taken. We have a bit between this. You know, it's a replay attack, right? That they end up it's a replay attack. So if, you, if you basically take a a working image and then substitute it. And then use it. Science director in your own hands. So we can also yeah. have a fingerprint with that. Yeah. So that is, uh, so hence the level of 2FA that you would want to include in your system depends on what is your last result in your space. And uh, what happens if something happens then? How will you be able to So there is this new concept which is being uh, talked about quite a lot in security intelligence. The concept of resilience. It's for, uh, they say it got borrowed from Pentagon. Uh, in the 70s, Cold, uh, Cold War and everything, right? Uh, the nuclear attack was a bit of a reality for them. Okay? They, in fact, conducted drills and all that. Uh, how to save yourself from the nuclear attack. But one military strategy suddenly came up with a scenario. Thing. Assume that we, uh, nuclear attack will happen. So, how will you survive after? Yeah, right. So, one of that. So, one of the, right. so, they came up with five, six scenarios and made sure that there will be resources to address after the aftermath. So, one of the concepts that has been touted in security and who has all the same Assume that it will be violated. Then what? How will you be? How easily can you recover? How easily can you replace these mechanisms that you are going to have? The passwords and make sure your static passwords are coming back. All sorts of things. And how do you minimize the after effect of that? That is where things are going. Any questions? Here? So, uh, there is a bit of blockchain. There are a lot of uh, discussions about whether blockchain can be used or not. Yes. Blockchain is a bit of Bitcoin and ABM. Blockchain is not. Bitcoin we can use because governments are not employed. Uh, it was currency needs to be regulated. Blockchain as a technology has been a super successful. I mean, it has uh, applications beyond cards and beyond, beyond currencies. So, again, you know, um, one of the what does blockchain guarantee is non trivial. Why is authentication required? One is making sure it's for the right people. So, but also because for a lot of the guys, it needs to link the burden of proof on the people. I mean, you did it because you had all these things. I think every person say that it's your responsibility. Transfer of liability. Yeah, transfer of liability, right? Um, so blockchain can help in transfer of liability quite a bit. Because again, uh, the hash keys and the blocks are, Based on all the previous stuff. But the 
the the original problem of other videos is really amazing. Where it is due to how strong is your right and how well can it be. Right. The all other mechanisms of you know what the key, how the key gets uh, distributed to users, the object may not solve all the other issues that we have. It can give a delta over the next time. Would it be right to say that blockchain is more like history rather than Yeah. Yeah, it's a right. everybody say that this has happened in the past and you cannot change it. Yeah, you cannot change it because it maybe would be how would, you, how would you type that to artificial So basically what they are saying is uh, when you are logging with it, use blockchain key to sign that transaction. You know how PKI identity should happen, right? You get a public private key then. And the website has a public private key. The website throws a challenge. You can sign it with a uh, private key. And the website can use your public key to and and again get it. Things proving that you are the true owner of the and vice versa. So PPI pair is used as a mutual identification. So they're extending that concept and saying that use blockchain key, which is also what is the used to compute the hash rate, right? To do the same process. And the advantage is it's more distributed. You don't have to trust these various certificate issuers. So ultimately it goes back to some group. So that's an compromise yeah. of that also. Yeah, right. So so that's the delta advantage. Now you a lot of other parties can get this key rather than just the distribution of keys also becomes slightly easier. I have a general question. Open the question. So, uh, has anyone thought of reversing or kind of making uh, uh, more uh, uh, symmetric the problem of uh, uh, identity? How do I know that it is the bank that is actually asking for this information? Which is currently very important. Uh, yeah. you are. Yeah. So, so that is because the PKI, right? PKI helps them. Oh, because the user still doesn't know. The user uh, also does mutual authentication with the certificate of the bank. If you have a smart card, <laughs> software smart card, which has your PKI key issued right. by the bank. It right? is or you already know that it's being issued by the bank. Yeah, it has to be issued by the bank. And that's one of the problems of these uh, software smart tokens. Yes. For every Website, you need to have a different smart card. Sometimes I think the bank can probably give something like its own public key. It can always authenticate. Yeah, as long as the mechanism, as long as you, uh, as long as you, uh, as long as you uh, trust the mechanism of transfer. Like right? you go to a garage. So the mechanism of transfer itself on a online kind of system is liable to attack. That is just not broken. Right. So, so that's what I'm saying. Like as long as you uh, trust the transfer of the key itself, uh, if, if the bank gives you its public key and you trust that transfer that yeah, this is the bank that is giving you this public key, you can always say that it's a bank. It's not the bank which is giving you a key anyway, it's a certificate authority. No, no, I, I mean like for, for, for that case, identified from um, so, uh, the bank. Oh, HDFC doesn't have the login screen, it says when you sign up, it says this is the image we are going to show you. Yeah, but that is. So, no, but that's silly. Yeah, but that's how they want to prove that you know it's us and nobody else. It just adds one more click for me, it doesn't do anything. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because that image is completely fake, right? Yeah. And it's the same image every time. Yeah. So with HTTPS, what happens is third party gets involved. You see, issuing this certificate. So again, it goes back to the point I made about identity being the key. Okay? Eventually, I think it's like who will watch the watchman, right? I mean, like you're saying that's. Uh, uh, so that is why if you want to like some certificate, certificate yeah. the system will warn you this certificate doesn't seem to be from a reliable authority. You want the certificate. Because anybody can clear the certificate. Right. So, but that's what I'm saying. Like, eventually you, you have to trust somebody, which is like yeah, the so certificate. It is like right, if you are hiring for your work team and you get one from Stanford and one from other college, uh, somewhere in the community. You trust the Stanford type of right? Because buildings are not valid. Behind. And then you have a mechanism to verify whether it is from Stanford. 
Yeah. If from someone else who you don't want to go on, take the next level. It's the same thing, right? So the certificates need to be issued from a standard authority, which is you know very high, like uh, one of the other uh, country based on uh, international companies. Right? And once that level crosses, then it goes to see either the public key and the private key signed matches. And then it signs back with its private key and sets so that the bank knows that this is the same certificate. Yeah, same guy that got enrolled and he has a bank key failed for me to proceed. So it's a mutual entity. So the problem with PKI is some software needs to be downloaded on each endpoint. Which is a big problem for many people. Many people are not aware of so at least mobile apps can be out of the test. Right. What do you want to do? Yes. Once you install it, but you know, the, the industry has said that people don't even install it. Because people are not savvy to install it. The PKI is smart, software is smart card. You enroll and then it gets dropped into the world. Yeah. You know the end point you are using to use the uh, mobile app then it's easier it can be part of the device. Yeah. Yeah. But on, uh, it's, like it's also quite performant with this, right? Uh, so it's it's some computation, then yeah. 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 The technology exists and uh, uh, you know uh, it is working. But there are issues, right? It takes it play, it takes Whereas for the interest of the OTP, no need to enter the country. So, yeah. so I think it boils down to the business is really not So that's why we got a bit more money. We don't might solve some of it, but again, who will buy that additional? They have actually solved it very nicely. Like, right? you can buy this UBP. It has been your device in my tower, it's not linked to anyone. And then you can keep on adding the various things of the business. But you know, again, people need to support the thing. All the it's a how much muscle power these companies And that's why we know that it's very interesting solution to harder because after a generation, you can that that thing will be built into your phone or your phone, then you can use that switch as a product. Yeah. It's a little great, but yeah, maybe that. The various solution thing is like when it's when there is a somebody steals it or it gets lost and then the phone can solve that. Yeah. 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 So that's Okay, so if there are no other questions, Banjala, thanks a lot for doing this. And um, uh, there's uh, drinks and uh, din uh, dinner downstairs. And uh, on behalf of Hasgi, I'd just like to present a small token for 50p. And I hope uh, you can have some hot tea and soothe your cold. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for doing this, Banjala. Please join us for dinner. And